My only hope is that ideas that I want to present now are very plain and simple. Well, uh, just to begin, I will uh, talk about uh, so called two dimensional semantics, and uh, I must say that there are some questions about. Will be will refer to 
totally different propositions. And um, uh, thus, we must uh, admit that uh, contribution of all possible words in a logical value of uh, sentences is uh, twofold. Uh, world can be used as a point of uh, reference uh, or as an actual world, as a context of use, as, a, as an epistemic perspective, epistemic scenario. Uh, or a world can be used as a point of valuation, um, as a point uh, in uh, which we can uh, compare our uh, statement, our sentences with uh, some kind of reality. Model structures underlying this approach are investigated well enough but the questions of their substantive interpretation are still hotly debated. Uh, uh, some of uh, researchers uh, believe that uh, two-dimensionalism is a sort of uh, non-classical logic. For example, Lloyd Hammerstone uh, developed, uh, and um, Davis, uh, they developed uh, logics uh, with uh, an actuality operator, kind of model logics. Uh, other uh, authors believe that two-dimensionalism is a kind of ontology. <coughs> ontology of um, different possible words. Um, other authors believe that uh, two-dimensionalism is a kind of epistemology, and so on. Uh, Robert Stonecker, uh, for example, uh, thinks that uh, two-dimensionalism is uh, not logic, not semantics, uh, it can be treated as a kind of pragmatics. Uh, so, today my concern is to clarify the ontological status of negation in such framework. Uh, of course, I recognize that there are a lot of questions here. With, uh, to do, with, uh, about two-dimensionalism itself, but if we uh, use two-dimensional approach, we can uh, uh, raise some further uh, questions. Now I introduce uh, concepts, uh, notions of A intentions and C intentions. In fact, uh, these notions were coined by Frank Jackson. Uh, A intentions are determined by the frame as a wall and uh, if, uh, as if the real world was a floating concept. As if uh, every possible world uh, can be treated, considered as an actual. And uh, C intentions, uh, they are determined by the fixed world used as a real one. And uh, going further, uh, uh, there, is, uh, there are good uh, foundations to believe that uh, A intentions and C intentions are connected with the notions, <coughs> traditional philosophical notions of a priority and necessity. Uh, for example, the regularity of uh, A intentions is usually regarded as uh, a priority, uh, which is inherent to some types of expressions. Mm. And the, regular the regularity of C intentions is usually regarded as a necessity. Here is some example. Um, you can see here, um, in the top line, Worlds uh, considered as uh, counterfactuals, counterfactual, and uh, in the left column, worlds considered as uh, actual. So in uh, these worlds, uh, our sentences and our words um, gain their uh, reference, and in uh, these words. Our sentences, 
ready sentences uh, is compared to reality. Uh, you can see here a two-dimensional matrix for name Hesperus <coughs> or morning star. Uh, for example, in the world W1, uh, 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 Hesperus uh, means uh, Venus and so is in uh, all worlds considered as counterfactual. In the second world, the same name Hesperus means uh, Jupiter. And in the language, in the context of uh, the third world, uh, this very name Hesperus means, uh, for example, Mars. Uh, in a similar way, we can uh, build uh, matrix uh, for phosphorus, uh, evening star. Um, and then, uh, saying that Hesperus is phosphorus, uh, what kind of proposition we assert? Uh, it's clear that uh, if we speak in the context of world number one, uh, this proposition, Hesperus is Phosphorus, uh, seem to be necessary. It uh, holds in every possible world uh, considered as counterfactual. But uh, it's obvious that in, if we use different worlds as a context, as an epistemic uh, perspective, uh, this identity, Hesperus is Phosphorus, uh, will be false in every possible world considered as counterfactual. So we produce uh, a simple kind of uh, a posteriori necessary statement as uh, it was uh, mentioned by Kripke. And here a different example. <coughs> Let us consider the statement uh, I am here now. Here you can see two dimensional matrix for I. Uh, in the first world, I means uh, Victor Garbatov. In the second world, I means uh, Elvis Presley. And uh, in the third world, I means Spock. Now you can see uh, two dimensional matrix for here. Uh, different locations uh, in different worlds are. Uh, the reference of uh, this uh, word. And uh, it's uh, interesting to look at uh, the resultant matrix for the sentence I am here now. Uh, despite the fact that uh, the reference of uh, every single word can vary through the words, you can see that in the diagonal, we have uh, some kind of regularity. So we have uh, a kind of uh, a priori contingent uh, sentence. Uh, a priori uh, is connected with the regularity in the diagonal. Now, <coughs> I must uh, mention uh, so-called Tharp's uh, theorems. Uh, they uh, uh, must under um, they uh, these theorems um, aims to point two important features of two-dimensionalism. First of all, uh, the only meaningful two-dimensionalism uh, uh, must treat possible worlds uh, homogeneously. Uh, I mean that uh, possible worlds uh, considered as actual as, uh, and considered as counterfactual might be the same worlds, <coughs> the very same kind of worlds, not different types of worlds. For example, uh, usual uh, non-centered worlds and uh, so-called centered worlds. Mm. 
this uh, approach uh, developed by David Lewis uh, is uh, misleading here. Uh, the second feature of two-dimensionalism is uh, some kind of duality, and you can see this duality here. Uh, Leslie Thorpe um, uh, maintains that every truth is a priori equivalent to some necessary truth. It's quite unusual, but if you take seriously two-dimensionalism, you must um, admit it. And B. Every truth is necessarily equivalent to some a priori truth. So, uh, dual theorem. Uh, theorem C I will not um, consider here. Uh, Lloyd Humberstone um, and his colleague Davis um, uh, developed uh, a logic with actuality operator. Um, actuality operator A um, uh, behaves as uh, you can as follows. Um, uh, the formula A P uh, holds in model M uh, and uh, world W used as uh, as counterfactual and world V <laughs> used as uh, an actual uh, if and only if uh, this very proposition P holds in model M uh, in uh, the world W used both as uh, uh, the world of reference and uh, the world of uh, valuation. Uh, here you can see uh, Humberstone's <coughs> explication of uh, Leslie Tharp's theorems. Um, we can obtain the same result uh, in the logic of actuality. Uh, point A. Um, you can see here that if P, P is true, then it has uh, some analog, some counterpart, which is uh, necessary and which is a priori equivalent to P. And uh, similar, if P is true, then you have uh, uh, an, uh, some proposition uh, which is uh, necessary and which, which is a priori, I'm sorry, and is necessary equivalent to P. Uh, <clears throat> here is one more example. Uh, suppose uh, we have some uh, arbitrary P which is not logical level or no contradiction. Um, we can uh, uh, we can have a relation of P in an arbitrary way. And then uh, if we use an operator A Actuality. Actually, we gain uh, regularity uh, in the line. So we transform uh, usual uh, a posteriori contingent uh, sentence P into the a posteriori but necessary sentence AP. And uh, uh, if we look for uh, for an a priori analog to P, we can use uh, such formula P if and only if AP. You can see here that uh, uh, on logical grounds we obtain um, regularity in the diagonal. So, <coughs> if P is true, so uh, we have uh, um, clear and uh, simple counterparts of every a posteriori contingent P, uh, which was described by uh, Leslie Tharp's theorems. But what if P is false? Uh, uh, the first point is uh, will be the same because uh, AP. Uh, <coughs> 
the stage to be uh, uh, counterpart of P in this case. But uh, what we have uh, with uh, uh, a priori counterpart of P? Uh, here you can see interesting uh, feature of uh, uh, this P theorem. If uh, P is true, then uh, the analog of P described before is one, but if P is false, then uh, the analog of P described uh, before uh, is uh, other. Uh, to uh, generalize this question, we can use uh, uh, some operator. I will call it operator C. Uh, uh, CP equals uh, AP if P is true, and CP equals uh, non AP if uh, P is false. Uh, then, uh, then uh, formula P if and only if CP is uh, a primary analog which is necessary equivalent to any contingent and a posterior P. Uh, so, um, I believe that we can talk about two modes of negativity. Uh, I will differentiate, uh, differentiate A negation and C negation uh, as uh, follows. Uh, a negation P uh, let be the negation of a necessary formula, which <coughs> is a priori equivalent to P. And uh, C negation of P be the negation of an a priori formula, which is necessary equivalent to P. Um, um, my point is that uh, A negation P is uh, very usual, is classical. You can see here uh, a negation of p uh, holds if and only if uh, negation of p holds. But uh, c negation p behaves quite uh, differently. And uh, conclusion: usually, a logical uh, assertion negation opposition is almost equal to the ontological one, the uh, position of existence of and non-existence. But in two-dimensional framework, uh, negation behaves uh, differently. It grasps uh, no, not only the capacity of things to be otherwise, um, I mean ontological counterfactuality, but also the capacity of linguistic expressions in some contexts not to denote what they are supposed to denote. I mean semantic counterfactuality. So, two dimensions, uh, two ways of uh, considering possible worlds, and two different negations. Thank you. philosophical grounds are really different and uh, its uh, technical side is uh, quite uh, useful but its philosophical uh, grounds uh, are not uh, solid uh, uh, so you don't live in uh, counterparts uh, okay yeah I don't Just a question for clarification. Uh, could it be said? 
Could it be said that uh, uh, actuality concerns uh, actuality concerns an antique view of truth and counterfactuals concerns an epistemic view of truth, or is it different? Uh, for instance, uh, can I translate? Can I translate uh, actuality by it's the okay, case that and counterfactuality by I know that? Uh, no, uh, otherwise, it's different. Uh, uh, counterfactuality is um, uh, the world as it could be, and uh, according to me, or according to uh, the general state of the world. Um, uh, your question is about the operator of actuality or of uh, the notion of actual world. Notion of actual world. Uh, the very notion of actual world is, um, as I see it, is a mistake. And the notion of counter counterfactual world is uh, ontological. So that's the converse. That's not otherwise, that's the converse. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a small question. Is there some correlation between this possible world semantics and what, uh, what Zaitsev, for instance, did with, uh, um, you know, Zaitsev proposed, uh, uh, what's the name? It's uh, many valid semantics uh, in, in which you combine epistemic and ontic two values. For instance, you have uh, 1 and 0 for I know and I don't know, and T and F for it's true, it's false. You combine both and you have something like a uh, two dimensional semantics, but not with possible word semantics, with uh, algebraic. Uh, what was the name? Zaitsev from Moscow. Uh, Zaitsev. Professor Zaitsev. 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 Oh, of course. <laughs> Of course, uh, there is uh, uh, real correlations. Real correlations, okay. Interesting, thanks. Okay. Um, I can't claim to have understood all the technicalities. Um, it was really interesting and I've learned a lot. But just to, to get a question for clarification, you said in the beginning uh, that there are various interpretations of two-dimensionalism, either as being epistemic, semantic, pragmatic, ontological. You then said that you wanted to talk about the ontology of negation. But in the end you talk about meaning, that is you say, um, see intentions denote the capacity of linguistic expressions to denote some other referent. So, isn't this maybe a hidden argument for a semantic interpretation of two-dimensionalism? That the properties of the logical properties of negation in a two-dimensional semantics point to the necessity of assuming a semantic interpretation of two-dimensionalism altogether. Yes, maybe you are right, uh, but uh, uh, even if. Uh, we talk about questions of semantics, the questions of uh, meanings of words. We can do it ontologically. It may be some kind of uh, semantic ontology. That's an interesting twist. Еще вопросы, комментарии. Тогда поблагодарим вас.